y'all, it's Amanda and this is my Texas Zone 8 garden. And I have finally gotten to the point where I am going to be planting up my pre-chilled tulips in some grow bags. And I'm gonna to talk to you guys about the whole process and why I am doing this this year. Okay, so in the south, specifically in my particular area, zone A, uh, zone 8, um, we have to pre-chill tulips, hyacinths, and crocus. And basically this tricks the bulb into thinking that it has been through enough of the cold weather and it, the coldness kind of creates like a um, biochemical reaction within the bulb that helps it to flower. Now in my area, if you do not pre-chill tulip bulbs, and that's what we're talking about today, most likely um, if they do come back year after year, they're going to be short and stunted where the flower is only a couple of inches above the actual ground. And that's because they did not have long enough cold spell to create that biochemical process to produce the flower and increase root growth. growth. <laughs> having trouble with words today. So the bulbs need to be stored in a nice, cool, dry location. I put mine in my beer fridge outside. Um, and so it's basically stored in a regular refrigerator for at 35 to 45 degrees. If you're someone who has a basement, it's an excellent place. You can store them there if you want. Um, the refrigerator works really well for me. I put mine in sometime in October. I like to have a minimum 10 to 12 weeks. You can go as little as eight weeks, but truthfully you can't over chill your tulip bulbs. Um, so the longer you leave them, the better they're going to end up being. So mine was mid October. So we're three months in about 12 weeks, a little bit more in, which works out really well. Now I store mine in my beer fridge. <laughs> um, but the reason I store it there instead of like my regular refrigerator, um, in my house is because in my beer fridge is just drinks, all kinds of sodas and all that kind of stuff for my kiddos. And so in there, I don't have any like produce, which can basically um, cause gases that would negate the flowering process of the bulbs. So it's very important that you keep them away from any kind of produce that you might chill within your refrigerator. A lot of people will just put their bulbs in their actual crisper drawer where you would put your vegetables. Um, that works out really well as well. For me, I just lay them across the top shelf of the fridge outside in the garage. So for this year for tulips, I'm growing tulips as a cut flower. I am not gonna be planting them in my garden. I'm growing them more as a production flower. So what I'm doing is I'm actually gonna be growing them in grow bags. So why am I growing them in grow bags? Well, for a couple of different reasons. Let me find my scissors. Okay, first reason being it's easy. Um, these are inexpensive containers for my bulbs. I can move them easily wherever I want them. And then when I'm done, I can easily change them to some other type of um, flower, whatever it is that I choose to grow. Secondly, this grow bags, and these are all on my Amazon storefront if you're interested. These um, grow bags are going to allow the bulbs to stay cooler longer outside than if I were to put them in the actual ground. Because this, even though it's going to be in soil, it's going to be up a little higher and it's going to allow the chill spell, the chilling season to go on with the tulips, which I think will work out really well. The biggest thing with something like tulip bulbs have really great drainage. They do not want to sit in clay soil, which is what I have. And this will allow me to do potting soil. They do not want to sit in swamp conditions because then the bulb will rot. Last year I planted them in containers, just beautiful um, antique concrete containers, absolutely gorgeous. But I really, I none of the bulbs bloomed at the same time. They bloomed in different rounds, which makes sense because some tulips bloom earlier than others. And I didn't really get the show that I wanted because I had all the containers in the front yard. Um, and so none of them really bloomed at the same time. So it ended up not being the show that I was looking for. So I thought, you know, instead of just stressing about putting them as like this big, beautiful feature, why not just grow them for the production for what I really want them for, which is cut flowers. So definitely growing in these is going to be great. So I've got one, two, three, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, two. I think I have 10 of these and um, their depth is about 12 inches and tulip bulbs need to be planted at about four to six inches depth below the soil line. 
Now, I've had a lot of people comment about how do I know when it's time to put my tulips outside? Well, you want to make sure you pre chill them minimum eight weeks. I prefer closer to 12 or more weeks. And you want to make sure that your soil temps outside are um, cooler than 50 degrees three consecutive days in a row, which mine were totally fine. And um, I'm also planting right this moment because I'm about to have like four or five days of rain. And I thought that would be really good for my tulips bulbs just to have that, you know, beautiful winter rain I thought would work really well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how I fill these up and plant the bulbs. When I'm planting the bulbs, I'm going to show you the different varieties that I'm planting. And then I'm going to put them outside so you can see how I'm going to set them up so that they drain properly outside. Okay, as always, I'm starting with my soil mat. And this I got a bunch of soil in here already. I am going to be utilizing the um, Burger BM7 potting soil. All right, so I'm going to be starting with the potting soil. And basically, I'm going to fill this bag maybe at least a third of the way full with the potting soil making sure i'm kind of spreading it out getting rid of any clumps okay so i've got it maybe 40 percent fill i've got a bag of compost over here <laughs> it's pretty heavy i'm basically just going to take a couple of handfuls of compost toss those in that in Give some really good nutrients for my tulip bulbs. And then I'm also going to add in some fertilizer. The fertilizer I'm using is just some from Walmart because I couldn't find any bulb, to uh, bulb tone and I was in a hurry. So this one I ended up with, it's Expert Gardener flower for flowers, 10, 10, 10, 10. Put a little of this in. Um, you can use a general fertilizer. A bulb tone would be better, but this will work fine. And then at this point, I'm ready to start planting the bulbs. So let me give you a close-up of that. Okay, so the first variety of bulbs that we're going to play with is called Tulip Sunset Mix. These are about 24 inches tall, planted about 6 to 5 inches deep, and they bloom mid-spring. So this is the top of my bulb, the pointy part. This is the bottom of my bulb. You want to make sure that your bulbs are nice and firm. If they are mushy, don't bother planting them. I'm going to be planting these very close together in here. I'll probably end up doing two containers with this particular variety. So I'm doing the pointy side up. I kind of want to do all one variety in one. I don't know if that's going to work out. Let's see if I can. I really don't want to go to like two. Yeah, this will all fit in here just fine. Okay, so I've got them all in there pointed up. They are packed in here, but remember I'm growing these for production not for like in my garden or as a, like a decorative element. And now at this point, I'm gonna cover them with at least four to six inches of soil at this point. And gently pack the soil a little bit, not really hard, but enough to like round out my pot a little bit. Now my thoughts behind what I'm doing is after these tulips are finished blooming, I'm going to um, pull the tulips and I'm going to come back in and plant gladiola bulbs in these exact containers and really kind of utilize these containers for planting large amounts of bulbs and or flowers that I can cut and bring inside for myself. Okay, I'm going to use a little, have a little bit of space, about an inch at the top for any water overflow. If I go all the way to the top of my soil, then if um, we get a lot of rain, it will overflow the soil. So we're good on that. I'm gonna go ahead and label this one. Okay, so that's one done. I'm so excited. 
I am going to be topping these with a little bit of mulch when we go outside. I'm not going to do that right this moment because I've already got the soil set up. So let's go ahead and start all the other varieties. Okay, the next variety we're starting is Apricot Impression. This blooms mid-spring. The height is about 18 to 22 inches, and it's excellent for cut flowers. And this is another bag of the Sunset Mix. Okay, the next um, set is Darwin Hybrid, and it's a design impression. There's 25 of these, and I don't have the height, but my guess, because it's an impression, it's probably in the 18 to 22 inch range. Okay, the next variety is Queen of Night. There's 25 of these. These are from Johnny's, and I grew these in the past, and they do really good in my area. Um, they give a really beautiful purplish tone with almost a bit of black and pink mixed in. So I'll be really excited to have these again. I would say their height was maybe a little bit shorter in like the 18 inch range. The next variety is Red Impression, and I love the Impression series for cut flowers. These are also from Johnny's. They have a beautiful, beautiful red tone. The Impression varieties do really well in my area, and these are approximately 18 to 22 inches tall as well. All right, and the next variety is Pink Impression, which is also a Darwin hybrid. These are absolutely lovely. I grew these last year and was obsessed with them. Nice, big, and beautiful blooms. And these are also about 18 to 24 inches tall, 22 inches tall. Okay, and then the last variety is from Walmart and it is called a uh, Gavoda Tulip. And I have 20 of them, but I'm only going to plant up 10 of them. I'm going to save the other 10 to force some tulips inside. Had some of y'all request to see that. These are about 16 to 20 inches tall and they bloom up mid spring. Okay, that was fun. <laughs> so we've got eight containers, um, which is great. It took me about a bag and a half of soil and the bags of soil were three cubic feet. So that was quite the investment for that because that bag of soil cost me like $19. Um, so that was about $30 investment in the soil. But this soil, I'll still keep the soil in here for the gladiolas when I do them later on in the um, late spring into summer and I'll just recharge it with compost. So I won't be getting rid of this soil. I went ahead and labeled each of them um, so that we can um, know which ones are what. I did not water them inside because we're gonna get a bunch of rain. So what I wanna do now is go outside and I'm gonna kind of set up a makeshift kind of setup in order to support these well enough that they're supported but they drain well because I don't want to put these just on the ground um, just like on the soil because I have so many drainage issues in my backyard anyway. Um, so I would like to put them in a location where they can get some really good rain and there won't be any issues, any issues regarding that um, but then also they have really great drainage so let's go do that. When's the rain supposed to start? How about that? Oh, I got my puppy girl with me. Okay, so I've got the tulips all set up. I put some terracotta pots underneath, I ran some cedar boards that I had left over from the shape garden, and put these up. This will allow 
the water to flow through and out easily without it sitting in mud and um, not draining. I have very poor drainage in my backyard and it's getting worse and worse. And I'm definitely about to have to, I would love to get rid of all the grass, <laughs> truthfully. Um, I have to leave some for my puppy dogs, but especially this whole center area where we're at, I would love for this all to not be grass someday, but we're not there yet. So I, it is about three o'clock in the afternoon. We have like an 80% chance of rain starting at seven and it's supposed to rain a ton the next few days. Um, we're not gonna be getting to freezing. We're getting just about freezing, but these tulips will be fine. And I'm just going to allow the rain water to water them. If I was not getting rain, I would water these in really, really well. And I would be sure that they didn't fully dry out the whole winter. But I think these will end up being fine as well. They'll also get hit by our sprinklers, which will be great. So I'm not even gonna worry about hooking up drip. And I am outside in my garden enough, even during the winter to check and make sure that these are still moist. But how awesome is this gonna be in the spring, y'all? I'm so excited, I cannot wait. It's gonna be fabulous. Okay, so let's, before we go, let's talk about can I save these bulbs? So that it ends up being a common question because it's a little bit different here in the South than it is up North where you can leave your tulip bulbs in and they come back year after year. That is not the same situation here. Typically, if you're growing tulips for cut flowers, um, cut flower growers, they don't save the bulbs. They just pull the whole bulb up, the whole situation up, cut off the bulb, throw the bulb away, and then, you know, use the flower. And in our area, it's a whole thing. It's a whole big hassle to save these. So what I would need to do is allow these all to bloom, remove the blooms, allow the greens to continue, the leaves to continue to grow. Once they finally brown and start to keel over, <laughs> at that time, I could harvest all my bulbs, um, cut the greens off, we'll probably leave the greens on, kind of just toss them in a shady area of the garden for a while. And then once they had had the opportunity to dry up a little bit, I could take them, store them inside in a brown paper bag, um, and then when the time came in the fall, I could go ahead and toss those bulbs back into the refrigerator. I haven't decided if I'm gonna try that or not. We'll see. Um, it would take a lot of planning on my part to remember that. And it's hard to remember, y'all. <laughs> it's real hard to remember. But um, we might try that, especially if these end up being gorgeous. If they end up being gorgeous, then I'm definitely going to be more motivated to repurpose them. And these bulbs will, you know, we put that compost in there and we put that um, fertilizer in there. These bulbs will bulk up, right? They'll get a little bit bigger and they should produce even more beautiful blooms the older the bulb is. Um, they might even continue to produce additional bulbs as well, which is pretty cool. So that'll be a whole nother situation. If you're someone who's done that in the South and you've saved your tulip bulbs, let me know. Let me know how that went if it was a big hassle and if it actually worked out for you the next year. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. As always, make sure you hit that like, com uh, hit that like button, comment and subscribe to the channel. Every time you guys do that, it grows my channel. You guys are the one who are propelling me forward and I really appreciate it. And make sure you check me out on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. I've also been commenting on YouTube community, which has been really fun as well. As always, she's a mad gardener or decorator or anything else that she wants to be. Thanks, y'all.